Hey guys, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today we are going to work on a fabric mask, a face mask. Quick disclaimer, this is not a surgical mask, a medical mask. This does not guarantee that all the germs are going to be held out. There's no filtration in this. This is just two pieces of fabric sewn together with the pleats in it that you can wear this, as you're going out. It's, it's nice if you maybe you have some germs you don't want to share with your family or anyone else when you go out. It's also good for people with allergies. If it's like here in Florida and I know in Texas also that we are in a high allergy season right now. And especially with the way the temperatures have been going pretty hot lately. So if you're out mowing a yard or if you're out going for a walk or something and you have a lot of allergy problems, it might be a good idea to wear one of these. It's not going to filter out any of the allergens, but hopefully it'll catch some of them so that you're not actually breathing them all in. Like especially when it's high pollen season, you're gonna be able to trap a little bit of it on the fabric so that you're not actually breathing it in. Now the one I'm gonna show you today is we're gonna make, this is an adult size, we're gonna make a child size today. This one I am just using two pieces of basic quilters cotton. If you choose to, on the back, you can go ahead and use a piece of flannel and that'll give you that little extra protection. Younger kids have a hard time breathing through the flannel sometimes, especially if they already have some type of a weakened lung condition or if they're going through cancer treatments or something like that. So it's best for them not to have the flannel, but as an adult or an older child, if you wanna go ahead and add a flannel backing to it versus just the two pieces of cotton, that'll help keep some of the dust particles from going all the way through the mask. So I'm gonna set aside the adult one but before I do, let me just give you the measurements for making an adult version, and then I'll show you the child's version. This adult face mask, I used two pieces of fabric that measured nine inches wide by six inches tall. I used the same for front and back. You can go ahead and mix it up. The way this mask is made, technically it would be reversible, so you can have both sides usable. On the pieces of elastic, I am using a quarter inch elastic because that's what I have on hand. If you have an eighth of an inch, that will work even better. I wore this mask for a little bit and that quarter inch elastic did not bother me behind my ears at all. So I have two pieces of quarter inch elastic that are seven inches long. You can also use the round ones, but you would have to tie knots because the round ones you can't just sew into the seams like this. And that's really the only supplies you need. And I use thread in the sewing machine and such like that, of course. Now for the child size, I chose this colorful fabric with the alphabet on it. Now for them, I went ahead and made this an eight by five. This is going to be maybe not for your smallest children. You can always adjust the size by the size of your child. It's really easy. You can always make a prototype and then measure them on their face. Give this one to an older child, pass it on to someone else and then make your child's one smaller or larger based on their needs. I also cut the elastic seven inches long, but when I sew it, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a little extra out. So once again, depending on the size of your child, you can go ahead and drop this down to six inches or five inches. You could take this part of the mask and hold it up to their face. It's going to be a little bit smaller due to seam allowances and such, and then measure from the edges around their ear, just to see how much elastic you're going to need. Because you don't want it super tight to where it's gonna irritate the back of their ears, but you also want it tight enough that the mask isn't gonna droop off their face. Now we don't have to do any quilting and there's nothing special that we're gonna do with it all. Just make sure your fabric is pressed nice and flat. We're gonna put them right sides together. If you have directional fabric and you want both the inside and the outside to match identical, to make sure that you have your directional fabric at the top on both sides. But if you want it reversible, it, it doesn't really matter because it is on the inside and it's not gonna be seen. So I know some people like to have everything match exactly. These letters are all crazy, so it doesn't really matter too much. They're going in all different directions. So I'm gonna put my opening on the bottom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and decide that this is the bottom. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go ahead and back tack and I'm going to stitch around all of the edges and back tap here and leave myself an opening just like we do when we flip out any of our bags or anything like that. As I'm going, I'm gonna stop before I get to each corner so that I can go ahead 
and add in the elastic. The elastic will be going on the inside so that when we flip it the right side out, the elastic will be on the outside like we need it. If you put the elastic in this way, then it'll be inside your mask. We're going to double stitch over all of the corners to make sure the elastic stays in nice and tight. I am using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm doing it at a 2.0, but you can go ahead and adjust your stitch length for whatever you're comfortable with and you're used to using. Just to remind myself to put the elastic in, I'm gonna go ahead and use my little clips. And I'm just gonna clip it where it's hanging out a little bit so I can see that it's there. I wanna make sure that my elastic is flat and that I don't twist it at all before I go to the other side. So just kinda of lay it down and follow it over to make sure it's nice and flat. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect because we're gonna readjust it as we stitch it. And I'm gonna put this piece on this side the same way. You can make matching adult and child ones, make the same ones for the entire family. So if you're going on a trip somewhere and you wanna wear them on the airplane, maybe everyone gets their favorite character. There's so many fun specialty fabrics out there. Or you do a family color so that you can, another reason to be able to spot your children from a distance by seeing what mask they're wearing. You can go ahead and pin this if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it. Said I am doing a quarter inch at the 2.0. I'm back tacking at the beginning and leaving an opening for me to go ahead and flip it out. So I'm just gonna stitch till I get about an inch from the corner. I'll go ahead and remove my clip. I'm gonna hold the elastic so it stays a little bit past my corner. I don't know if you can see that. I have a little bit just sticking out at the end. I'm gonna sew all the way off of the mask. Well, almost off, because when I get towards the end, I want to go ahead and back tack a little bit, because where the elastic is is going to be the most wear, because that's where it's going to be pulling, where people pull on it to put it around their ears, or the mask itself is being pulled. Then I'll just stitch forward again right off. I'm going to take it and spin it, and by doing this, I'm going to go ahead and stitch over that corner once again. You can cut your thread if you want. And I'm still gonna go ahead and back tack and back stitch on this. And go ahead and make sure you can move your elastic a little bit so that you know it's not getting any sides of it stitched down into this corner. And then I'm just gonna continue on to the next corner. Sometimes I find it easier to go ahead and remove my clip just make sure my elastic is not being twisted and I'm just gonna hold it in my hand here. Depending on the length of your elastic, it could be a little bit, it could be pulling once it's on there. So I'm gonna slide this over to my corner, have it stick out just a little bit. As you're sewing, you can feel it with your fingers and as your machine is going, the needle's going in and out, you can feel the difference of having the elastic in there. So just go ahead and slow down, do a little back stitching, stitch right off. I can pull it again. Make sure that my elastic is not going to, I don't want to stitch over the side of it underneath here where I can't see it. So make sure it's just laying in there nicely. And on this edge, I can go straight to the corner. Stop when I get close to the elastic and remove your clip if you want. I'm gonna try to angle my, try to angle my elastic so that it's not as much this way, but so that when I'm stitching this way, I'm not gonna stitch over any of this part here. I wanna just make it come right out that corner. Back tacking it. So again, I'm going to turn it so I can remove this clip. 
make sure the elastic is slid out of the way, the part that's inside the mask. It's not gonna be a crisis if you stitch over it a little bit. It'll just make your corners here. I did that here and I caught it a little bit so that I have more of a diagonal corner versus one where it comes straight out of the corner. It still works perfectly fine. It fits nicely. It's not an issue. I don't think even people might not even notice it if you don't point it out. And don't get going so fast that you forget that you have one more corner for your elastic. Make sure it's not twisted. Hold it in my left hand. Bring it out to my corner just so it sticks out a little bit. I could be very careful and still end up with the same situation and it'll be okay. If you want, you could maybe possibly tack these down ahead of time, put a little dab of glue maybe or something, maybe put a pin in it versus using the clip. Once you start making these, you might decide you want to make a dozen of them for your friends and family or to go ahead and sell them in your online shop or at a craft fair. And the more you make, the more little tips and tricks you find out on your own as you're going. Remember, this is our last side, so we're going to leave an opening. You don't need to leave a very big opening for this. It's not very thick. It's just those two pieces of fabric with the elastic. So you can really go with just a two inch opening if you'd like. We're gonna machine, machine stitch it closed and we top stitch on afterwards anyway. So that's it, that's what it looks like for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and just trim my corners and get rid of this little bit of electric extra elastic all the way around on the four sides. We don't need the extra bulk of the elastic in there. The corners aren't as important as if we were doing a purse or something because there's no batting and there's no stabilizer or foam or anything else in there. So those little bits of two pieces of fabric won't cause much of a problem at all. You can go ahead and give it a press if you want, but I usually don't. You can trim off any extra threads that are just popping out everywhere. If you have a fabric that's gonna fray a lot, it's going to be okay because we are gonna top stitch it once we spin it around and that's gonna hold all of that fraying inside. So if you made your hole too small, use some hemostats, otherwise just stick your fingers in, gently pull it all out. Use your little tool to go ahead and help out, pop out any of those corners. You can also pull on the elastic a little bit. That's a good corner there. That one looks nice. We've got another good corner there. Another nice one here. Let's see, are we four for four? Yep, we did really good. Got all four corners are popped out nicely. I'm gonna take this over. I'm just gonna roll all my seams to make sure they're sticking out well. You can go ahead and give it a nice press. We go ahead and make sure everything's all tucked in and that I have a nice straight line for here. This is where my opening is. After I get it pressed, I'm gonna put a couple pins in to remind myself. When I take this over to iron it, I run my iron across it here and I just stick the tip of it underneath here to get these edges. I don't wanna iron the elastic. I feel like it's a plasticky type polyester type thing that it would probably melt. I know it, it's got rubber type of something in it, so you don't wanna melt that. You don't wanna lose any of your elasticity. Now we're gonna leave this part for now. We're gonna go ahead and close this up in a minute but we need to make our pleats. Now I've made a couple pleated items in my past sewing and stuff. I haven't done it very often. I tried measuring it and being exactly precise and it didn't work for me. So I just went ahead and I put these three little pleats in just by eyeballing it. 
If you want, you can go ahead and measure it exactly. There are pleating tools that you can use and such like that if you have them, pleating boards. Me, I'm just gonna go ahead and wing it again. You can use clips, but I find that pins are less uh, bulky in this area. I have an empty space here at the top and bottom, so I wanna go ahead and just kinda eyeball where I'm gonna leave it so that all the pleats are gonna stay in the center. And then I'm just gonna fold it and make just a little pleat. I pop a pin in it. After you get all your pleats in, you can always adjust it and change anything that you don't like. So I'm just gonna try to make them all about visually the same size. I think my first one is a little bit large. I found on this one that if I went about 3 8 for the pleat where you fold it over in this section for the whole width of it here, that that worked out a little bit better than the full half inch or an inch pleat because you only have a small amount of place space to work with. And with the kids ones here, it's gonna be even smaller, so I might need to go down to about a quarter of an inch with these. And when we're making these, we're gonna to have to do it on both sides. We just wanna make sure that the pleats are on the same, because if the pleats are going down this way on this side and up this way on this side, it's gonna get twisted in the center it's not going to look nice and it's probably not going to be comfortable or work in a way that we need it to. Now most of the masks I've seen, well actually all of them have had three pleats. I haven't seen any with less or more. But I'm just gonna go ahead and put the last pleat in. Make sure, if you see that your mask, as you're doing your pleats, is starting to get off like this, then that means your pleats aren't even. So you need to adjust and make sure everything is lined up on the edge nicely. Bring some of your fabric over so it wants to behave for you. And we'll just take the next one Give it a little eyeball. And I think that works fairly well. You just have a lot going on in this little space and you just need a couple extra hands, that's all. We're gonna eventually stitch that all down, but see how our pleats, let me move this fork so I, uh, pin so I don't stab myself. But you see how all our pleats are going this way? So we wanna make sure the next side that we make them the same way. And since they're already here, it should be relatively easy just to fold it over and there's your pleat right there because you can just follow your line and kind of eyeball where it is on the next side. The pleats are going to be half open and open on the mask as you're wearing them. It's not going to be as noticeable. If you do crazy ones like a one inch one and a quarter inch one, yes, it's going to be very noticeable, but I can just follow it along. I'm gonna line up my top here so that it ends right here at the bottom with my other pleat. And then do the same thing with the last one. If you're making a bunch of these You'll either get really good as you get going through it or you'll want to measure it and maybe make a template or just mark it all down on each of them. As you're doing this, it does look a little strange and it looks quite tiny. I thought that this mask was really small until I put it on because it does have all that ability to stretch. So part of it will go over your nose and part of it will go under, underneath your, around your chin and that holds it in nicely. Let me find my opening for when we turn, just so I don't lose where it's at. Now using an eighth of, ow. So now we're gonna top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge all the way around. It's going to go ahead and close up our hole. We will hold all of our pleats in. 
and it'll just make it nice and uniform looking all the way around. So when they go ahead and wash it, everything is gonna stay the way it is. This can be hand washed. It can go through easily through the washing machine. I don't think there'll be too much of a problem with the elastic, but I would not put it in the dryer because as we know, the heat from the dryer will eventually make the elastic not be as strong. I do like to stick with my 2.0 stitch length here. I like to have it just a little bit smaller along the edge. You can have it at any length you like. Bring my thread to the top all the time just to make sure there's no surprises underneath. You can use a matching thread. You can use a contrast thread. I don't know how much, if you could do a fancy stitch, decorative stitch over the plates, but you could definitely do it along the long edges if that's something you'd like to try out. I had to go a little bit slow at the end. These pleats really wanted to push my presser foot. I did not have a problem here on the adult size because you have that extra room, but of course the child size is smaller. As you're going, you're probably gonna need to pull out your pins ahead of time. We are going through extra bulk here because each pleat is, I think six layers of fabric. So just take it a little bit slow. After you get through one pleat, go ahead and pull out the pin for the next because your presser foot is holding it down. See, that wasn't too bad. Just make sure you don't have any extra fabric anywhere underneath the mask on the side you're sewing. Slow down when you get towards the end. On this side, it's not as bad because the pleats are, the way it's folded, it's on the outside of my presser foot, so it's not giving me as much grief, but I just wanna go slow. If you're worried about the pleats coming undone, you can go ahead and do a you know, back stitch over to cross it, but I don't think where it's going to be too much of a problem because we've already stitched everything the first time around, holding the elastic and all of that. So the pleats should be fine, but if you're concerned. You can go ahead and leave the mask all fluffy like it is now. I did go ahead and press the adult one. I'm gonna go ahead and press the child one too. You can hit it with some spray starch if you'd like, just to lock in those pleats. I gave it a nice hot steamy press from both sides. So when your child puts on the mask, they're gonna go ahead and pop it like this. So you can have matching ones for mom and dad and for the kids and for the whole family. Make them for friends, make them for anyone that you know that might be, as I said, it's, it's up to them. I have seen some of these being made for cancer patients, for the children in the different children's hospitals and stuff. So they must seem very comfortable with it. So it might be something you can ask your cancer centers or your children's hospital if that's something that is approved for them. And if it is, you can go ahead and make a bunch of them up for the kids. I think it'd be really fun for them. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you like it, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more things like this, go ahead and subscribe. I put out a tutorial every Friday. And a Whip It Wednesday on Wednesdays where I show you whatever I've been working on in the craft room this week. In the craft room this week. So thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.